Y'all, is Drew Sedora back for more along with Kenya Moore? Do you want more, Drew? Do you want more, Sheree? Well, we have an update for you, so stick around to the end of this video because we got a little extra tea on Fallon and Dennis McKinley. But before we get into that, y'all know the drill. The Amazon link is up in the description of this video. And if you like travel, you know exactly where to go. Link in the description as well. All right. So let's get into the T of it all. All right. Our first story comes to us from our friends over at the Real Housewives Zone. Now, this is also taken from radar online as well so shout out to both sources for this so they're saying that drew sedora is set to return for the royal housewives of atlanta season 16 with sheree on the chopping block still so let's get into it all right they say that drew looks to be returning sources tell radar online that producers want to add a bunch of fresh faces to the next season but also want to keep a couple of originals to anchor the show. They said that producers debated doing a reboot like Bravo did with the Real Housewives of New York, but decided against a full reboot. We told you guys this from our exclusive from B. Scott as well, right? However, sources are saying that Sheree is still at risk of being cut, but it does look like Drew will be coming back for another season if all works out as planned. Only Portia Williams and Kenya Moore, Kenya Moore are confirmed for returning for season 16 as of now. Confirmation of the full cast is said to be coming within the next few weeks. Okay. So, let's talk about this. Um, I think I said it the other day when we talked about Kenya Moore officially announcing her return. Well... You know, we talked about it coming from B. Scott, but then Kenya Moore also posted it on her Instagram page. So for me, I kind of feel like having Drew back, especially with Candy out of the mix, I can understand it because I feel like Drew skews more toward a younger demographic. I also feel like Drew's story was left a bit incomplete when we finished the season. What's going on with her divorce from Ralph? You know, what is the true tea about her and Ty? Those are the questions that I feel like I left so frustrated with, which is which is the key to my frustration with Drew Sedora. All season long, have y'all ever had you know, like an itch in the middle of your back? Have you ever felt that? You you and it, it usually happens around bedtime. I feel like, and you got this itch right on the side of your back, and you be trying to reach it, and it don't feel good until either you ask somebody else to scratch your back, or you finally find a way to wrench back there and get and get that itch. That's to me what last season felt like with Drew. Like we heard about the tie situation from Mimi, we or the insinuations at least. There were rumors in the press, the photos, you know, then there's the divorce from Ralph, which I mean, is it a divorce? They were racing to the to the courthouse, but we've heard no updates on this divorce. No one seems to know what's going on. Dr. Heavenly was interviewing her while she was at the dentist's office. We ain't get no tea there. And something had just been telling me to pay attention to the tea leaves. And I felt like the tea leaves were saying she was coming back. So my frustration with Drew is, Drew, if you are to come back to this show, I just want you to be able to provide solid answers to these questions. Now, a lot of people will argue, well, she don't have to give y'all everything. She don't have to give y'all her whole life true. But because these were highlights from her story, I don't like the term storyline because I feel like it's overused. And I feel like people use that as a weapon to say, well, you ain't got nothing to do. I'm your storyline. No, to me, a storyline and story are two different things. 
What is your personal story? What is the thing that makes you interesting? What is going on in your life that makes you interesting and fascinating enough to, to, to retell that story on television so that people can either identify with it or gasp at it, right? And so I feel like she's got these stories that feel incomplete, i.e. I can't scratch that itch because I never really feel like I'm getting the full story from Drew. So, Drew, all I ask is if you come back, be ready to talk about these things and discuss them in a way that feels fulfilling to the audience and producers be willing to tell that story accurately as she tells it. Period. That's my ask. All right. With regards to Sheree, she too is someone who I don't necessarily always believe. And that's just, it is what it is. I respect Sheree because I think Sheree is fabulous, right? She is. She's fabulous. Like, she's got this thing about her. Things may not always work out as planned, but she still looks good, right? At the end of the day, you know, and she still knows, she, she knows how to throw shade and all that is cute, right? But in terms of the story that she has to tell, what is it? Because the story that she was attempting to tell last season with Martel, I mean, now that I know he's an actor, I mean, and also now that we've heard from Melody Rogers at the Love and Marriage Huntsville reunion that in court he allegedly said that that was just a business arrangement. So you bring in business arrangements to Atlanta from another show? I don't like it. I don't like it. And so for me, it's a no. It's a no. It's a no, no, no. Like, I can't do it. I just can't. I'm sorry. I can't. I shan't. I won't. So with that being said, I would bring Sheree back in a friend capacity because I feel like that would give her fair warning to say, like, listen, if you're not going to show us the real and give us something meaty, then there's no room for you at the end, ma'am. And uh, again, I, I I never like to say somebody needs to go. Y'all, it, it, it's a rare day when you hear me say that. Because I always want people to stay employed. I want them to have money coming in. I want everybody to be ab abundantly blessed and rich. Okay. If you listening to this now, I'm speaking abundance into your into your life right now. Accept it. I mean, I want you to receive that abundance that I'm, I'm sending it to you through the screen, baby. But in terms of reality TV, I'm going to need you to give me a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to need you to give me a little bit more. All right, so let's move on with our next story. So the streets have been talking quite a bit about the Fallon of it all, right? So it is no surprise to me when I look on the line and I see the Fallon. Hey, Fallon Bay going live with Enyak, okay? Now, what is Enyak? Am I pronouncing that right? Enyak is... <laughs> I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. That's that's why I'm giggling right now. Okay, let's just call it Enyak, okay? I, I could be wrong. I could be right. Enyak. I just like saying it at this point. So, Dennis has a liquor brand called Enyak. <laughs> I'm laughing because if I'm wrong, y'all gonna try, y'all gonna tear me up in the comments, and I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So let's just actually just call it Enyak, or is it just Yak? Okay, I don't know. But the people had gotten all like this was everywhere yesterday afternoon, right? It was uh, it was on all the sites, right? And it really wasn't until and so it had the people, you know, it had the people talking like, "What's what's tea?" You know, because we had just talked about Fallon talking about if she were to run into Portia, how that would not be a good scenario and wouldn't be no talking involved. Rock, 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 
Yeah, tat, tat, tat. Okay. So anyway, um, the caption reads on the shade room, shout out to the shade room, Fallon Pena links up, linked up with the father of Portia Williams' daughter, Dennis McKinley, for what looks to be a meet, looks for what looks like a meet and greet. All right. So for those of you guys who don't know, shout out to my boy, Mr. Jer Jerome Tramell, right? He provides us with a reminder. Fallon, Trina, and Young Ma have all had deals with Dennis's liquor brand. Um, in in yak cognac. Oh, that makes sense. In yak cognac. Oh, cognac. In yak. Oh, I see what you did there, Dennis. I see what you did there, friend. I see. Actually, I can't call him friend because I'm blocked. Anyway, so that I think is the tea of it all. And the timing of it, I think, is just is serendipitous. You know, serendipitous. In line with the fact that Fallon is promoting her new show, Falling for Fallon. So if you guys are interested in that, uh, make sure you guys are following Fallon on the Instagram. Shout out to The Shade Room. Shout out to The Real Housewives Zone and Radar Online for today's stories. Let us know what you think about all of these stories and more in the comment section down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and uh, tap into the link and pre-order that book, baby. Book two is given. Every, I mean, it. when I read it back, and I've had to read it back several times, I literally had to ask myself, I mean, it did it go there? Like, is that where it went? Okay, okay. That's what we're doing. Okay, okay, okay. And not to toot my own horn, but toot toot, you know. Uh anyway, I'm just I'm just joining y'all. I'm just I, I don't don't take me serious today. I'm just having a good time. Listen, y'all have a blessed Saturday. Tomorrow, we will be chatting it up with Carmen from Love and Marriage DC. Hopefully, you guys will tune in live. We should be going live around 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow to chat about everything going on with the thruple of it all and more. So be sure to tune in to that, and I will catch you in the next video.